Hello everybody and welcome to this YouTube video on what are the phases of private equity investing. We're going to take a look at what are the different private equity structures that are there, what are the distinct phases of private equity investing and let's learn more about this because we have to know what are the different stages in which accounting function and administration function becomes extremely important in private equity accounting. Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle and OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide research rich content on these topics. What is private equity? Private equity is basically like a pool of funds. Now what do we mean by a pool of funds? A pool of funds is basically when a single entity takes in capital from different investors and thus creates the investment pool okay this is distinct from portfolio management services where a investor only handles the money of a single other entity but in a pooling concept the pool collects capital as contribution towards the fund and then the pool collectively invests into different investments private equity investments are normally made by highly sophisticated investors or institutional investors like hedge funds, mutual funds and other private equity companies themselves. Okay, The private equity is organized and structured by the GP that's a general partner and they invest in unlisted securities. It's very important to understand that private equity stocks or bonds or preference shares or any other kind of investment is not listed on any secondary market like a New York Stock Exchange or a NASDAQ. In unlisted securities, there are a few investors who own large quantities of the stock. Since they're making in contributions of $10 million plus, they would have that kind of capital. And because they've taken that much stake in a company, they're able to invest to that extent. And they're therefore participants not just as capital contributors but also as decision makers sometimes in the management and organization of the fledgling company. The private equity investors play a very sophisticated role in the growth of the company and that's very important to understand from the point of view that this private equity investments, a private equity firm therefore also has to have a finite life. Private equity firms therefore <clears throat> have finite lives which typically last between 10 to 12 years. So right from the time of <coughs> excuse me, starting the firm to the time of exiting and winding up the fund and giving the investments back to the investors, the phases of the, for, the, phases of the private equity firms typically run like this. The first phase is the formation phase. This is closely followed by the investment phase. The formation phase followed by the investment phase is then followed by the harvesting phase and the fourth phase is the extension phase. Let's take a detailed look at each of these phases. How do you know whether a firm is going to be started or not? How, does the, how do the investors know how to start the private equity fund? This comes under the stage of formation. Formation is bringing together the team. In my opinion, this is the most challenging aspect of the birth of any fund. Here we are talking about diverse set of people with different backgrounds, with different investment philosophies coming together to design and structure the fund. So the formation of the fund is an announcement to the world that yes, this fund has been closed. It's very important that the fund organize and structure itself in a manner that the fund manager and the investment team are known to the external world because they are the ones who are going to make very critical decisions on behalf of them within the private equity fund. The team then identifies and articulates the investment objective. What are the kind of investments they're going to make? Are they going to make in a specific sector? Are they going to make in particular kind of companies? Are they going to be an IT focused company? Are they going to be an artificial intelligence based company? What is the structure? What is the investment objective of the fund? 
this has to be extremely well articulated. Have there been cases where fund managers and unlisted private equity funds been penalized by SEC for not sticking to, you know, with the investment objective mentioned? Yes, there have been cases where private equity funds have been penalized by SEC for not sticking with the investment objective or rather making an investment which is outside the investment objective. That's another story. That's another you know, investigation that will that'll take place at some other point of time. But right now, suffice to say, the fund manager now has to open the fund to external investors. This fundraising activity is very important. And it closely follows the economic cycles that happen in the secondary markets. For example, if the secondary markets has got very strong bull market, you know, it's in a very strong bullish phase, even the primary markets and the unlisted markets also have a very bullish face. It's quite rare that they go in opposite directions of each other, but fundraising and closing the fund, by closing the fund, you say, okay, this is enough. We wanted to get $100 million. We've got $100 million. Let's close the fund and now start making investments according to the investment objective. This formation stage is the most important aspect of the fund creation. Once the legal document, this has to be followed by signing of the legal documents between the general partner and the limited partners. Okay, there's normally one GP and about four to five LPs. I've seen funds where there are two GPs and there are 12 LPs and these funds have struggled to make the LPs satisfied in terms of information flow, information processing, as well as accounting standards. So therefore, funds tend to keep the maximum number of LPs to nothing more than seven or eight. Once the legal documents are signed, capital flows from the LPs into the uh, pool. The fund is formed. The fund then starts the investment phase. The first three to five years out of a 10-year or a 12-year kind of a time frame is spent by the private equity fund in identifying what are the kind of companies they're going to be investing in? The fund has already, you know, clearly articulated the investment objective, but they also have to state what are the kind of investments they're going to make. And this second phase is very, very challenging. This is like a little baby growing up. Every day comes up with surprises and challenges, right? Similarly, over here in the investment phase, you are in your itself the, the fund itself is new it's also investing in new companies what is the growth potential do they have a vision to be able to invest with a seven to ten year time frame all this comes in the investment phase this is called as sourcing and evaluating potential investments in unlisted stocks all listed companies today whether you talk of google apple meta all of them at some point of time have received significant amounts of private equity funding and therefore have grown to these levels. Even companies like Uber, Grab, etc., have reached these stratospheric heights after receiving significant amount of private equity capital. The private equity fund then has to provide enough content with respect to due diligence and valuation. There are multiple rounds of funding, there are different investors. This due diligence is very, very critical. Normally, normally performed by extremely qualified chartered accountants or certified public accountants, due diligence and valuation is the most quantitative exercise that the private equity fund takes up because here we're deciding whether to pay $10 for the stock, $5 for the stock or $15 for the stock. And there is no other way to determine the right price of the stock except through your own evaluation methods. So investing phase, therefore, is very, very a challenging phase for the accounting team. Once the due diligence and valuation is done, every investment has to be supported by term sheet. The sheet that can, the term sheet is a list of documents, the terms and regulations of the private equity investment into the unlisted stuck, unlisted company, and this results into closing the deal. The investment, if a private equity fund makes investments. A total number of investments is 15. There will be 15 term sheets depending upon you know, how many times they have signed the documents for that. This closing the deal is very critical for the private equity fund.
with each of the investee companies, with each of the portfolio companies. Once the investments have taken place, this does not mean that harvesting is the third stage. Is not, it does not imply that it happens after investments. It happens parallelly, okay? It happens simultaneously. Because as you've made investments, you also want to check on how the portfolio as a whole is doing. This is called as portfolio consolidation. Like a farmer harvests his crop after knowing that it is ready for, you know, uh, removal and sailing to the market. Similarly, private equity funds also harvest their portfolio. In the harvesting phase, they're focusing on not looking at any new opportunities, but growing the existing portfolio, right? You've heard of companies where the portfolio valuation has increased 10 times. You've heard of extremely large private equity funds, which have, you know, enjoyed 10 times, 12 times returns during the seven or eight year period of investment. And this harvesting is very important from both private equity funds perspective as well as the portfolio companies perspective because both of them are working towards you know enabling shareholder value and growing shareholder value for each other this growth focus results into objective of maximizing the profits it's very important that as profits get maximized sure the private equity fund also makes money but even the Portfolio company is very delighted to make profits because then it can go to the next investor at the next round of funding and ask for a higher valuation. So harvesting stage is a stage where the portfolio is maturing. The portfolio is now ready to reap the rewards for itself and for the private equity fund in terms of growth strategies. There are few new investments made and most often harvesting consolidated along with the investment phase. The growing of the existing portfolio is very important as a confirmation and affirmation that the investment, the uh, portfolio opportunity, as well as the valuation were all right. Finally, the exit strategy. You have to exit the portfolio companies either by selling off the stake to other investors or through an IPO or selling it back to the promoters and private equity funds will exit the portfolio companies and they will close the fund and return the capital back to the LPs and the GP. This is very important for the private equity firms. So while the private equity fund exits the portfolio companies either through IPOs or acquisitions uh, by other companies, the whole idea is that the private equity fund along with the fund managers like the GP and the LP enjoy the profits of their 7, 10, 12 year investments. They've waited patiently. They're not like intraday traders who are trading, you know, intraday on the stock market, looking at technical charts and exiting in five minutes, seven minutes, etc. They're looking at a very, very long time period of holding. Sometimes the fund may not exactly close within the 10 year time frame and it might seek an extension of one to two years, which could also happen. And then you say, okay, let's enjoy the profits of the company, right? Thus, if I were to draw all this on a timeline, the first is the formation of a private equity fund. The second is the investment. As you can see, harvesting and investment overlap each other, not completely, but they're almost there. And extension and harvesting also overlap each other. Thank you so much for listening into this video. And... Keep learning, keep growing with me, Sushila Hariharan. Thank you.